It's as if we never said goodbye. You're watching Rye Reviews, Sunset Boulevard. They're on Sunset Boulevard. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching another edition of Rye Reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about the new Broadway revival of Sunset Boulevard the Musical, now on Broadway at the Palace Theatre for a limited 10-week engagement starring the one and only, the fabulous Glenn Close. So, before anything, let me tell you a little bit about Sunset Boulevard the Musical for those of you who don't know. In her mansion on Sunset Boulevard, faded silent screen goddess Norma Desmond lives in a fantasy world. Impoverished screenwriter Joe Gillis, on the run from debt collectors, stumbles into her reclusive world. Persuaded to work on Norma's masterpiece, a film script that she believes will put her back in front of the cameras, he is seduced by her and her luxurious lifestyle. Joe becomes entrapped in a claustrophobic world until his love for another woman leads him to break free with dramatic consequences. Let me tell you a little bit about the show. I absolutely, absolutely loved it. I, you know, went in not knowing anything about this show, not knowing what to expect, and I thoroughly enjoyed this. I went to the show. I won the lottery for the show. Um, as many of you may, may or may not know, shows on Broadway do a lottery system and they do it online where you basically enter your name, enter your information, and you're automatically entered to win tickets for that show. You can do one ticket or two tickets. And um, if your name is called, you pay the, um, the price, which is usually a lot less, probably like almost like 50, 75 percent less than what it than what a ticket would be if you were to buy it at the box office. So in this case, I won the lottery uh, for fifty five dollars, and I got to see the show. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit later on about um, where my seats were and how I felt about um, the lottery winners, um, where they put us. But first, let me tell you a little bit about the characters and who I loved, and get to it. So. Glenn Close, of course, was ripe for her age and still brought the audience cheering to their feet all these years later. She dazzled, amazed, bewildered, angered, and saddened all of us with her portrayal as Norma Desmond. It's a shame she isn't eligible this year for the Tony Awards because she would totally win Best Actress, but of course, you know, Sunset Boulevard was on Broadway already and she won a Tony Award for that. So, you know, they the Tony committee turned around and made her ineligible to run, but, or to be nominated, shall I say, but her co-stars are able to be nominated. And that leads me to her ne the next uh, person I'm going to talk about, Michael Xavier, who is absolutely, absolutely amazing. He's from Britain, and he is so good and quite attractive, might I say, as well. So he made his Broadway debut and stars a struggling actor, Joe Gillis, um, and his performance is one for the books. He sparkles in the beginning of Act 2. Literally, he sparkles. You'll have to see it for yourself. Excites, saddened, and enrages all of us and brings us to our feet um, in the title number Sunset Boulevard in the opening of Act 2. His performance will definitely, definitely earn him a Tony nomination. No doubt about it whatsoever. If he does not get nominated for a Tony, then there's something really wrong. So, so good. Great job, Michael Xavier. Siobhan Dillon is a delight and a work of art. She's making her Broadway debut and stars as the love interest to Joe Gillis, Betty Schaefer. She was very good as well. And last is Fred Johansson, who plays Max von Everling, Norma Desmond's butler, and as we come to learn, um, former ex-husband, who basically shields her from the outside world, who that is very cruel, and keeps a deep secret from her as well. So... Um, he is absolutely spooktacularly good, and I say that with all of its emphasis. Um, he plays the best Max, I think. Well, I didn't see the original, but he plays the best Max, in my opinion. Um, his character does everything he can to keep Norma happy while hiding, as I said earlier, a terrible secret from her, and that secret is that nobody wants her anymore. You know, he writes fake fan letters to her, and... Um, you know, keeps her thinking that she is still loved and still wanted by Hollywood when she is really this late, washed up, dilapidated star that nobody really wants anymore. And so, you know, he has to keep her happy and keep her from um, killing herself, which she tries to in the show. And he he's got a he's got a tough role. Um, and he is spooky. He is great. His deep baritone voice. Um, as I said, excites, saddens, and sends chills down your spine, literally. He, this 
this guy, Fred Johansson, has played a lot. I've seen him um, in one of my favorite roles as Pilot in Jesus Christ Superstar, the 2000 um, version, which was awesome. Um, but he's got this really, really deep voice. And so at times he needs to be really scary and really like he, he will yell at um, at Michael Xavier, who plays Joe. And it's it's like a roar through the theater. So definitely, definitely scares the hell out of you. And he scared the hell out of me. I mean, I had such chills down my spine. It wasn't even cool. I mean, so I like really, really like how they played this. So, so now that I told you a little bit about the characters, let me uh, switch things up a bit and give you some other things to talk about. Um, as I was saying, I want to tell you a little bit about the lottery system for this show. If you win the lottery for Sunset Boulevard, please note that these tickets um, are going to be sporadically placed throughout the theater, mostly up in the last level of the theater um, in the back. And that's where I was placed. I was second row from the last in the back. And for those of you who know me, I'm not used to sitting in the back of the theater. I like to be up front. I like to be in the orchestra. Be, I'm able to focus better that way. So I was there and... Um, you know, this leaves the, where I was, this leaves the top of the stage to be cut off, though not a huge disadvantage. One of the, uh, I guess if you want to say one of the disadvantages of this is that you miss enormous big entrance, the first entrance that we see of Glenn Close. You're kind of, you, you know, you hear the music and you hear, you know, you hear the people going, <gasps> and it's like, but you're looking around trying to figure out where she's, what, what are we looking at? Who, and then you, you see her and then it's not until she gets halfway down the steps that you see and, and that it's Glenn Close and that it's, you know, she's making her entrance. So that's a little disappointing. Also throughout the show, um, you, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to see some of the scenes because, um, how the set is shaped, it's got the orchestra in the center and then in the center of the stage. And then it's got a stairwell, which goes stage left and stage right and wraps its way around and meets in the center. And so a lot of times the characters will run up on the steps and they use the steps for a lot of the scenes. And when they run up there and they do their scenes up there, it's hard to see them and it is blocked a bit. That being said, this show is a 40-piece orchestra um, live right on stage, right in front of you. You can't miss it. And it's one of the biggest orchestras Broadway has seen in a, one of the biggest orchestra pits Broadway has seen in a while. So that's pretty incredible. And as soon as the opening note starts, it's just like, it's breathtaking to hear. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. And, um, the set as well also doubles as, you know, things. One of the, the things that I love about this show is that the set is simple yet complex and they use it to their advantage. The whole set is black and it doubles as, you know, Norma's Mansion, the Hollywood Backlot, and, you know, Street in Los Angeles, you know, Max's Car, all this different stuff. And they use it to their advantage. Now, of course, you've got the orchestra in the center, so, you know, they the the cast really has to, is really tight on stage, but they, they use it great. So I thought, found that to be really interesting as well, that they, you know, took a different approach and, you know, basically used what they had on stage as their backdrop and you know of course just use them props and little things in between to make the setting of the scene so that was also very interesting as well so finally here's what you need to know sunset boulevard runs at the palace theater on broadway until june 25th you have a little over a month and a half to see this show before it's gone i don't want to say for good but before glenn close is gone in this role for good she has made it undeniably clear she will not be returning to this show. She will not be coming back in 23 years to play this role. So go see it now. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see the incomparable, the amazing Glenn Close in her glory and her prime as Norma Desmond. And you get to see some of these new actors as well. So go see it. It's at the Palace Theater and runs until June 25th. Andrew Lloyd Webber's classic, Sunset Boulevard. For more information and to get tickets, be sure to visit Sunset boulevardthemusical.com and learn so much more about the show there. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Rye Reviews and be sure to stay tuned for many more reviews to come in the following week.